Hello. <laughs> it's Andy Graham with HoboTraveler.com. I've had a trying day today. And uh, I decided to... Uh, well, I also need a header. <laughs> On the top of YouTube, there's a place where you're supposed to have like a, a featured video. Um, the internet is... Uh, I've been on the internet now for uh, about 14 years. I actually, before I had Hobo Traveler, I had other websites. Hobo Traveler, um, well, bottom line is this is going to be my 2012 mission statement. Like the State of the Union, okay? What is the state of Hobo Traveler and this is what is the world? I'm Andy Graham, Hobo Traveler. I have traveled now for... 13 years and perpetually, 13 years and uh, almost 11 months or something. And March 1st, I'll have uh, 14 years in. The, the website Hobo Traveler was uh, founded in uh, Voyager Hostel. I bought the domain on, I think, 2000, year 2000, on January 1st, I think. Uh, I tried to get the website, The Traveler, and it got it was open the day before it got taken today. So by ironically, uh, uh, some Israeli guy recommended, I think we kind of walked, talked about it, about Hobo Traveler that day. Uh, the website theme is Hobo Traveler. What, what a hobo was is, is, is a person that uh, didn't have any money and uh, basically traveled from place to place looking for a job. Um, a tramp is a person that travels but doesn't work. A bum is a person that uh, just doesn't work at all. But a hobo is actually, in the time of the Depression, was uh, the people that needed a job and maybe their wife and family, they, they would go to a construction job in a different place, they'd jump on a train. So in a way, the whole theme of my travel has always been to look for a job. Now, rightly so, it's hard for it to understand, but if you've traveled for 14 years, you got the operative question you got to ask is how how does a person afford to do it? My phone's inside. Um, it you know travel blogs or travel logs. Let's just call them travel logs because travel blogging. I was writing a you know, newsletters, 200 newsletters before I ever started blogging. So I've always tried to have these kind of missives that, that told the story of my thing. So for, you know, almost 13 years, I've actually written something about uh, an ongoing travel log. Cook blog, travel log, they're the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you kind of a, a story of my journey. Okay, but what happens is, he said, when somebody takes off on one of these journeys, the reason why they don't continue is they must find money. So, why did I start Hobo Traveler? I wanted to find a way to travel. I wanted to continue to travel. Okay, so, as always, if you study my website, you'll see that I'm constantly talking about money in a lot of ways, because at the end of the day, to give this dream, to give the the, the fantasy, the romanticized, the, the, to, to, to be able to see the world, you need money. Okay, so we dream of something, and I dreamed of traveling. So I worked day and night for and lived this. I lived at five dollars a day for the first four or five years. I had a lot of money to start out, then I spent it all in the first year or two. And then I, because uh, I didn't realize I was going to travel, I just, I took off. I, I just took a sabbatical from life and then I realized that uh, I was addicted to this lifestyle. I started traveling in Acapulco. I, I first went to Acapulco, lived on a beach called Pia de Cuesta. For, and then I would go back and forth to Tosco, Mexico City, up and down through Mexico. And then uh, a couple people invited me to go to Playa del Carmen, and then I jumped and went to Guatemala, and after that it was over with. Uh, but somewhere along year three or four, um, I started getting donations and stuff like that. And uh, once I got up to about $5 a day, I, I knew I could travel forever. 
Um, the whole reason for Hobo Traveler was one reason, is to earn enough money so that I could continue to travel. Um, and what I thought, and the mission of Hobo Traveler is to give readers the information that I learned, so if you wanted to, you could do the same. Now, I don't want you to be a hobo, and it's, 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 a, it's supposed to be for fun, okay, it's not, I'm not a bum, okay, I'm not a tramp, I do go from place to place looking for how to earn money, and I'm going to write a book eventually on like 300 ways that you can earn enough money to travel. But the mission for this year is to, uh, we're, we're going to publish a book called uh, something like a life, uh, a life Without Borders, explaining to you the hundred locations where you could just hang out and have fun, or live or retire, and as chosen by uh, a consensus of about uh, 50 seasoned travelers, people that have gone for two or three years traveling. Uh, what happens is, is the theory was this, is that I asked, I went around and I asked people, I wrote, I wrote a lot of people and I asked them the question, if, you know, tell me, tell me the places that you stayed for longer than one month. And I wasn't really, I was telling them, I, I was kind of tricky in a way because I just wanted to know where they accidentally, because if you ask people where the best locations are, they might tell you what the guidebook says. But the truth in the pudding is the place where they stayed and they didn't leave. So to me, I wanted to know is a place where you, you liked well enough to hang out for a month. Because these are more important than a place you thought was something that everybody should know. I mean, a lot of people would say, oh, I love Paris, but did you hang out for a month there? No, I was only there two days. Okay, but <clears throat> I'm not going to live in Paris for two months or two days unless I had probably five thousand dollars a month at the end of the day um, the seasoned travelers enjoy life because we uh, we live in complete comfort free of work and the mission of hobo traveler is to well one, one of my sayings I always say is life is good what I want to do is share with you why life is good for me and why life could be good for you and how, how if you dream about it, you could live the same life as me. Um, I'm not saying my life is better. It's just for a person with endless curiosity, I'm in heaven. I get to, I've been to 90 countries. Every day is different. And, uh, a lot of the videos that uh, are on YouTube and in this thing, there's like 315 maybe. Uh, they're just, you know, chronicling, chronicling the the real world. I just turn them on. I don't. What what I want to give you is the world unedited. I want to give it to you real. I don't want to maneuver you. I want to be honest with you. And this is. Again, one of the reasons why I'm doing more of these videos is because uh, in between, you know, my facial expressions and how I explain things, there's another message, you know, it's like, you can see, you, you have to get to become my friend enough to know if this kind of life is even close to what you want. I mean, I, people romanticize travel, and it's, it's not, you shouldn't romanticize, it's living your life, moving. Uh, what I truly re will recommend, and I'm going to, you're going to see a lot more of it, I'm going to recommend that everybody stay for three months in each location because this will lower the uh, stress level down. Um, I haven't needed to do it, but uh, I do realize that if, if everybody just planned on three months in each location, what they do is first get to understand the culture. They, they would settle in enough to you know, basically see between their, take off the rose-colored glasses and see the culture for what it really is, get over the culture shock, assimilate, learn a little bit of the language, and they actually would uh, have a more peaceful life. Because the actual <coughs> traveling between places is torture. 
friend of mine this morning asked me uh, how you go through travel through South America. I said, I said, truly, it's easy. All you do is say, I want to go to you know, if if you're in in Quito, Ecuador, and you want to go to Banos, you just stand around saying Banos, and somebody's gonna put you in a taxi and put you on a bus. And to, I mean, traveling the world is traveling is relatively easy, but to travel comfortably is a different thing. But if you're willing to sit on your butt on a bus, you can travel the world. And one thing I want, I, I, a living, sometimes people make this into some kind of, they think that you're on vacation. Traveling is about 10 times cheaper than living in the United States. Traveling in the underdeveloped countries, which are really the normal countries, 85% of the world is developing. Okay, the United States, Europe, and Japan, and Australia are overdeveloped. If you want to see the world, 85% of it is 10 times cheaper than America. So this lifestyle is is actually 10 times cheaper than you know what you're not. You, the average person makes $10 a day in the world, and uh, they live quite well. Now, in a world full of consumerism, in a world full of status, um, this can be very confusing. Um, I'm, I'm living a lifestyle that is uh, peaceful. I'm, uh, I don't, I, I slow down my world and uh, I want to give that to you. So the mission of Hobo Traveler for 2012 is to um, refine and again try to educate you with some travel tips. I'm going to uh, focus a lot more on uh, the idea of uh, living abroad as opposed to uh, just this romanticized traveler type stuff. I'm going to try to make, I'm going to try to empathize with your fears. I would really appreciate if if you told me why, what, what I really need to know what your fears are. Now. A lot of people write me and say, how do I go to this? I'm, I'm not going to answer those questions. I mean, if you want to go to Paris, you want to go to Iquitos, Peru, you want to you just call up a travel agent, that's pretty good. Buy a Lonely Planet guidebook, buy a Rough Guides, buy a, you know, Footprints, uh, and read it and go. I'm not going to sit around and, you know, give you the easy stuff. If you want to go someplace complicated, like Afghanistan or Iraq or something, yeah, I might be a better... Chest, but just uh, travel agent stuff is not that's the reason why I seldom want to write, write about this stuff is because it's, it's uh, not my goal to be a, a tour guide my goal is to give you a lifestyle that I'm, a, I'm about a lifestyle this is a lifestyle called well it's going to be explained in the book uh, A Life Without Borders but it's also on Hobo Traveler and eventually it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not a it's not a tour and it's not a vacation. I I live my life traveling. So um, all the videos and everything are talking about a lifestyle. So if this life is for you, follow along, enjoy, and welcome. And uh, this is my mission statement for 2012. Um, I had kind of a funny day. I'll, I'll tell you a final story. I had a funny day. I was, uh, I'm trying to organize a, a Wikipedia page, mainly so that uh, it's all factual, kind of like a resume online. But um, it was kind of interesting because uh, they said that my life wasn't noteworthy. <laughs> I was laughing because they, Wikipedia people, they, they, uh, they. Uh, I'll say, Glenn, how many people have traveled for 14 years? I don't, I don't know anybody. One of the things about traveling, and one of the rules, traveler rules, I say, is that you can't stay in any place longer. There's a lot of people that have lived out the United States outside their home country for longer than 14 years. But very few of them have nomadically, continuously traveled. So one of the rules, or one of the accidental things that I've did is I've never stayed in one place longer than about three months. So, uh, and so, 
I'm even thinking about offering a reward this year for anybody that has uh, traveled. You know, I want to find the. I want to find out who's traveled the longest. But they they've got a continuous. I mean, it's just living outside the United States is not traveling. I mean, they got to go up to a, have gone to at least 50 countries. They have to have been outside their home country. They have to have never rented a. You know. Basically, if you've rented a house, or you've rented a home, or you own a home, you're probably not a traveler. Uh, but you have to have left everything behind and become homeless. But then you have to uh, have moved at least every two or three months continuously for this to be part of it. Once you've stayed in one place for longer than three months, you've stopped traveling, even if you're in another country. So I'm, I'm thinking of... Uh, offering a, a finder's fee for anybody because I would really like to do research in this because this uh, perpetual travel lifestyle is is uh, an interesting thing but welcome to Hobo Traveler and the mission statement for 2012 if this doesn't work I'll do it again <laughs> thank you Andy Hobo Traveler